So we are talking about today water potential. So you've got this worksheet here, and to the left, as Beyonce would like to say, we have our formula. This is the water potential, or the potential of water to find the openings, and this is the pressure potential and the solute potential. So that's our formula. Okay, now our solute potential will always be negative because we know that solute particles impede the ability of a water molecule to get to, let's say, a channel protein or an aquaporin. They physically impede it, so it's harder the more that you have. That's why a greater number would do that. Now, very simply, also water is attracted to these. So if I had an opening, an aquaporin, an integral protein that could have the water go through, this could get in its way, or the water, because of its attraction to this positive ion, this could be a sodium ion, it's hard for it to overcome that attraction and get to that opening. So this potential always has a negative effect. The more solute particles, particles that can dissolve, the greater the negative factor, the greater or the harder it is for the water to get to those places where it can make a transport. Remember, water's moving, moving randomly, and the more of these particles that get in the way, the harder for it to get there. So this is a negative factor, okay? Solute potential, negative factor. But a positive factor or one that could be positive is pressure potential. It could be positive or negative, okay, depending on the type of pressure. If you've got pressure that is pushing on the water in this direction, it's a positive pressure because it's going to increase the potential of the water to get to that opening by pushing it around it or letting it overcome that attractive force. That's important. Now, a negative pressure would be a pressure that pulls on the water in an opposite direction, which would lower and make its what? Water potential even more negative as you pull the water away from the semi-permeable membrane. Okay, so this is always a negative value. This could be positive or negative depending on where the pressure is interacting. If it's helping get to the opening, it's a positive factor, and if it's hindering it from getting to the opening, it's a negative factor, and the combination of those two is the total uh, potential of water. Do not forget, though, when we measure water potential, we're always comparing water potential from usually extracellular fluid, all right? In this case, it could be fluid, okay, outside the cell, and then fluid inside the cell. And then we get a feeling for how water moves. And water always flows from higher water potential to lower water potential. Always. And we call this the flow of water from higher to lower water potential. And this is osmosis. Now, it's also diffusion if you talk about the same idea but you're not dealing with water. So diffusion is the movement of particles along a concentration gradient from high to low potential. Osmosis is special in that it's for water, but the idea and how it works is essentially the same, is the same. Okay, so let's look at a couple of scenarios, very important. So we have the water potential of pure water. Now pure water is not gonna have any pressure potential, any open water in a beaker is it, not confined, so the pressure on it is zero. And because there's nothing mixed with the water, there's nothing uh, in this part right here, C, it's also, so pure water has the highest potential it can have is zero. Now in the potato cell, it's a living cell, it's got enzymes and all kinds of other things, DNA, it's got solute particles. So because it has some solute particles, it's got a negative factor here. Now, right now the pressure is zero on it and the overall water potential in the cell is negative three. The overall water potential outside the cell, oops, okay, so let me get rid of that. The water potential in the cell is negative three, okay? And of course, the, the water potential outside is zero. So if you can think with me, the three is, in, negative three is inside, and of course, outside the cell, we have a zero. So again, as I just said, 
what we know is that water potential is going to go from high to low. So it's water is going to go into the cell. Okay, probably the worst pick I could pack. So the water is going to go into the cell. And of course, the cell balloons up. But does it keep going? To, does, it, does it burst at the plant cell? And the answer is for a plant cell, no. And the reasoning behind this, remember, plant cells have a cell membrane. And then they have this cell wall, which is a very rigid structure made of cellulose. Okay. Now, as water keeps rushing in, this cell wall gets bigger and bigger, and it pushes up against, I'm sorry, the cell membrane gets bigger and bigger, and eventually it pushes up against the cell wall to the point where the cell wall starts to belly outward a little bit, all right? Just kind of gets to the breaking point a little bit. And then when it bellies out, okay, and I have to redraw this, when it bellies out a little bit, and it's still kind of cuboidal, okay, and let me draw the cell membrane. It's kind of in here. It, 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 it gets pushed so much that now it's kind of pushing back. So it got stretched so much, now it's kind of pushing back, right? So you're kind of bellying it outward, so it kind of pushes back. And when it pushes back, I think with me for a second, it's pushing on the fluid, okay, to do what? Well, that would be to leave, right? So it's pushing back, and this would be positive pressure, right? This would be positive pressure. So this would go positive. So we have the water potential equal the pressure potential plus the solute potential. And we know the cell has a negative factor. This is going to make it negative. It's some negative number. It's, it's already negative 3. And this is going to get positive. Why? Because I'm pushing back and making this what? Water leave the cell. It's pushing backwards. So this is going to be a positive value. And when that positive value gets big enough to 3, now the water potential is 0. And therefore, we have this turgid cell. Okay, turgid cell means that water is filling it up past its max, pushing back on the cell wall and creating a very, very stiff cell that is filled up with water and it gives it structure and that's how plants can actually what stand up on themselves and when plants wilt okay they don't have this turgor pressure anymore they're flaccid and these cells would look something like this where you'd have your cell wall and then you'd have the cell membrane kind of pulling away from it and it, and and you'd have all this loose air pockets or just flaccid, loose um, part of the cell, which is a wilted form. Okay, so this idea of turgid pressure, positive form, is what keeps plants together in terms of their structure. Okay, so, so let's get started with the questions. The cell is in equilibrium. Important word here. Equilibrium, you can basically say isotonic, meaning water is entering and leaving the cell. Or water is entering the cell as fast as it's leaving. Okay, really important probably to draw a diagram. So here's my cell. And then that's the surrounding solution. And it could be in a beaker. All right. Now, the question says the molarity of the surrounding solution, okay, is 0.4. Now, molarity is a concentration. So this 0.4 molar, as we're learning chemistry, is a concentration. So it's basically equal to the C, okay, that we saw in our formula given to us in a reference table. So there's our C there, okay? So hold on, right here. Let's get rid of some of this because it's bogging my mind here. So this C, okay, and it's a negative factor, solute particles, as we talked about. So this C right here is molarity, okay? And you see the word molar concentration. Okay, they told me that. And so there it is. That tells me there's some number of solute particles in a liter of solution that are outside the cell. Okay. All right. Now we're saying the solution is at 30 degrees Celsius temperature. 
They want to know what the solute potential of surrounding solution is. Okay, well, the solute solution, or the, the um, solute potential, I should say, is equal to the psi of the solution, uh, of this um, solvent, I should say, and it's equal to negative I CRT. And again, don't have to memorize that. That's given to you in your reference table right there. The C, of course, is the concentration they gave us. The R is this constant right here. And the temperature has to be in something called Kelvin. All right, now let me explain the Kelvin again. The Kelvin is a temperature scale that's essentially the same as a Celsius scale, except it starts 273 degrees sooner. So uh, if you have a zero degrees Celsius, and you go to the coldest possible temperature, it's negative 273. So for a Kelvin temperature, they start the coldest possible temperature at zero, and then at freezing point of water or melting point of water, it's 273. So it uses the same scale, it just starts 273 degrees sooner. So therefore, you're just going to add 273 degrees to your Celsius to convert, and it keeps the it keeps the temperature in a positive scale. So to solve for the solute potential, don't forget the negative. It's going to impede the water. Okay, we're going to times it by this I factor. Now the I factor is how well something breaks apart into smaller pieces. And I'll tell you right now, big macromolecules, okay, like proteins, like uh, ACEs, enzymes, oses, which is, of course, sugars, these do not break apart into smaller ions. What, tend to, what tends to do that is something called salts, and these are inorganic compounds like sodium chloride that break down into their individual ions. Okay, and we'll see more of that as we go through. So because you're talking about sucrose, which is an ose, it's a sugar, it's not going to break apart, so the number of particles is going to stick together as one. So I'm going to put a one there. The concentration, this C part, this is negative one times the concentration, was given to me as 0.4. The R is given to me up here as 0.0831. And the temperature, which has to be in Kelvin, I'm going to add 273 to 30. So Kelvin is equal to Okay, my 30 plus 273, and I get 303. And now I'm going to use my calculator. And so I'm going to go negative 1 times 0.4 times 0.0831, 303 Kelvin. And if we use our units, which I'm not really pushing right now, I will in another course, you'll get the unit to be in bars. Everything is going to cancel except for the bars. That's basically a unit of pressure, but that's what we're going to use here. And so when you do the math, you get negative 10.07. And that equals the potential of the solute. Notice it's negative. It's got a negative effect on the water because the water is now going to be what? Attracted to these particles, or it's going to impede the water from finding a way to get in because it's, it's physically in its way. All right, now they want to know what the water potential of the surrounding solution, because I really just saw, I just solved for the solute potential. Well, water potential, the ability of the water to get to those aquaporins or those channels to go into the cell, okay, is so the water potential, it's a W there, is equal to the solute potential, I should keep that separate, plus the potential of the pressure, which could be positive or negative. So party people, we know that when we have surrounding water in an open system, this is going to be zero. Okay, so our water potential equals our solute potential. So therefore, our water potential is equal to a negative 10.07 bars. What's the water potential of the cytoplasm of the cell? Well, don't forget we said the word equilibrium, which means what? It means that the rate of water entering is equal to the rate of water leaving. This would imply 
that were isotonic to the outside. So the water potential, because it's in equilibrium, there's no net flow of water, so the water potential of the cell equals the water potential of the surrounding fluid. Okay, same thing. So the water potential of the cell is equal to the same value. As you can see, it's not terribly difficult. As long as you understand that the solute potential is a negative factor. And this could be positive or negative depending on the scenario. And you understand that an open system for the water, there's nothing pushing on or pulling on it, so that's going to be zero. And of course, when you have pure water, the potential is the highest at zero. All right, let's continue on this trek. All right, now number two, you measure water potential of a cell and find it to be negative 0.24 bars. So what did I measure here? the water potential. So we found the water potential of a cell. Water potential of the cell. Okay, and I'll just put water here. Sometimes you want to label that. Is equal to the what? It's equal to the pressure potential plus the potential of the solute. Okay. So you find that the cell is negative 0.24 bars. If the pressure potential of the same cell is 0.46, hmm, what must be the unknown? Okay, so of course you're going to subtract negative 0.46 from the point. For those that haven't had the algebra, I'm going to solve for what? This is plus the potential of the solute. So if I want to solve for this, I do negative 0.46. That would cancel because this is a positive value. And this is a negative 0.46. And so when I rearrange this, the solute potential must be what? Negative 0 0.70. And that'd be bars as well. All of these potentials are actually measured in pressure units. How about that? Okay. And the reason why if you have a solute potential, it's negative 70, but your water potential in the cell is such low, it's because there's positive pressure. Any guess where that positive pressure came from? Yeah, that turgor pressure of that cell membrane pushing on and bellying out the cell wall so that it's pushing back and creating positive pressure. Yeah, turgor pressure. That's how it keeps the cell nice and supported. All right, so let's continue on with number three, and we're having so much fun. All right, what's the water potential of a cell with the solute potential of negative 0.67 and a pressure potential of 0.43? So we have our formula the water and of course we've got our let's say pressure plus the solute okay so we've got a uh, solute potential of negative 0.67 and then a pressure of 0.43 this could be turgor pressure it's positive and of course you're adding both of these and when you put this together, you get a negative, negative 0.24 bars. That's the unit. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. So it's that was a straight plug in, and some of these are that simple. Okay. Now, some of these are going to get a little more challenging, and I'll walk you through, I think, most of these, but I think that you're going to be on your own for most some of these. Okay, so number four, if the cell's potential is three bars, and yeah, some of these are real easy, so we have cell's potential has three bars, cell's pressure potential. See, let's, let's start with the formula here. So, I, like a broken record, here we go. Solute plus... Pressure, solute, uh, it pressure. The solute potential is negative 4.5 bars. Plus the pressure is three. 
Okay, we can, I think, handle this math, right? So the water potential, of course, is negative 1.5 bars. And these are relatively easy, okay? So um, if you look at number five, the self question was placed in a beaker of sugar water with a solute potential of negative 0.4, okay? So this is the cell. So again, I always think to draw to make sense of that, we, we've been calculating single potentials. Now we're going to put this together. The questions are going to get a little more difficult. So in this cell, it's negative uh, 1.5 that we just calculated for. And we're going to put it in a beaker. Okay. And it said that the solute potential is negative 4.0 bars, as we would say in New England. All right. So... Uh, this is an important question here because you say, well, open water, what do we know? And this is a key today. Open water, we know that the pressure potential is equal to zero. So the water potential is equal to, of course, the solute potential plus the zero. Okay, so we know that the water potential is negative four. Okay, so the water potential of the surrounding water. Johnny Trent is equal to negative four. And so what do we know? And again, if I went too fast, all right, water potential is equal to solute potential plus the pressure potential, but in open water, okay, the water potential or the pressure potential will be zero. Okay, so that's why the solute potential equals the water potential. But the most important part here is that Water flows from higher potential to lower potential. So this water in the cell is going to leave, okay? Because this solution, okay, right here is hypertonic, right? It's got more solute particles. It has a greater, okay, solute uh, potential. So hypertonic. This is if you ever play with a snail and you put salt on it, okay, this is what happens. The water comes out. Or if you take too much salty foods, okay, or um, you can dehydrate your cells by having too much of a salt diet. And in fact, what happens is the water can flow into your, um, uh, let's say, capillaries or your veins and come out of the cells if you have too much of a salt solution that increases your water potential. And that actually makes your blood volume go up. And that actually will put more stress on your heart because your heart's now pumping more fluid than it's supposed to in the same space. Yeah. So in any case, all this stuff is interconnected. So now we're getting into some real, real problems here. Those are really simple. And number six, let's, let's talk about this one. Let's be one of the, I think, the last ones that I do, but let's just break it down. The value for water potential in a root tissue was found to be negative 0.33 bars. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I have some kind of a root, okay, and I'll just draw some root structure. So these are my fancy roots, okay, and they're saying that the water potential, so that psi of the water, okay, is equal to negative 3.3 bars, okay? If you take the root tissue and place it in a solution of sucrose, so let's put our entire root in a solution of sucrose, and it's a 0.1 molar solution, that's our concentration of sucrose, in an open beaker, and there's some key words here that we really have to identify. Number one, open beaker. Okay, another one is, that's the only one I think so far. <laughs> All right, so open beaker. Now the open beaker screams to me that the uh, potential, the pressure potential of the water is going to be zero. So I know that this is going to equal zero, okay, for the water, surrounding water. Okay, what's the water potential of the solution in which direction, and in which direction will the net flow of water be? Well, I know that the water is going to flow from high potential to low potential, so we're going to need 
the water potential of the surrounding sucrose solution. Okay, and so what do I know? Well, I know that this is equal to this for the millionth time. So bear with me. Okay, and what I know is that this value is zero. The pressure in an open container is zero. So we get rid of that term. And so I can get my pressure of this if I know my solute potential. Now my solute potential is equal to negative I uh, C R T right from the reference table. That's what the um, solute potential equals. And whatever I get for that, that's going to equal my water potential. And then I'll know how the water flows based on this value comparing to this. Sure, it's not that bad. Okay, so the I. Well, I'm dealing with an OS. These are big macro covalently bonded molecules, right? So I have sucrose. So that's screaming to me that the I stays to 1. What's the concentration? Well, they're telling me it's 0.1 molar. What's the R? The R is my 0.0821. Just to make sure, we go to our reference table. And it's 0.0831. Okay. So 0.0831. And then our temperature has to be in Kelvin. Remember, this formula is given to you in your reference table. And they said it's 20 degrees. So 20 degrees Celsius plus 273 is 293 Kelvin, and that's what I put here. All right, because Kelvin, uh, 273 plus, degree, plus the Celsius equals your Kelvin temperature. All right, so I'm going to plug this into a handy-dandy calculator, and what we get is a value that's negative 2.43 bars. And that's equal to my, what, solute potential, which has to equal my water potential. So this value here is equal to negative 2 point, I don't know, 43. All right, well, let's change color, dramatic ending here. How is the water going to flow? Well, it goes from high potential to low. They're both negative, so the bigger value is the one closest to zero. So water is going to flow into the root, and the root is going to swell. All right, so that's so the water would flow into the root. Okay. All right. I'll I'll do one more. Why not? Okay. Number seven. Sodium chloride dissolves into two particles in water. So they're telling you this, okay? So this I would be 2. If the solution in question 6 contained 0.1 molar NaCl instead of 0.1 molar sucrose, what would be the water potential of the solution? And which direction would it flow now? Would it change? Okay, well, same problem, okay? We're going to need the, the water potential of the surrounding solution that's going to change. And, of course, that's equal to the solute. Of course, the pressure is going to zero. And this, of course, is equal to negative ICRT. So everything is the same except I have this NaCl chemical, which is not an ACE or OSE or macromolecule. They're telling you it breaks apart into two particles. So this is going to be 2, negative 2. The concentration is 0.1. The R is still the same, 0.0831, and the temperature is still the same, so it's still 293 Kelvin. Okay, plug all that in. Of course, it's going to be twice as large, because I just threw a 2 in here to the 2.43. So I get a negative, all right, negative 4.86 bars, and that's equal to my water potential. So if this value is now the water potential, okay? So if that's now the value in here, who is the bigger water potential? Well, of course, this is now the bigger. So now if I have my solution, negative 4.86, and then I get my, my root, baby root, okay? 
which is negative 3.3. Clearly, party people, the bigger number is the one closest to zero. Water flows from high potential to low. The water would be lost out of the system. And we would say that the solution is what? Hypertonic here, and here it was hypotonic. Okay? All right, so that's basically all you're doing there. And understand that this little I factor tells me how many particles NaCl, as I've talked about, breaks apart into two ions. All right. So that's about all I want to do here. All right, people are cheering me on to keep going, so I will. All right, number eight, a plant cell with a solute potential. Okay, so this poo, two equals negative 0.75. Constant volume, that screams to me equilibrium, mm, isotonic, when immersed in an open beaker. So let's draw it, open beaker, and of course another key here, open beaker, tells me the solutions, what? I don't know what the T is here, but my psi of P equals zero. So plant cell, let's draw the plant cell, it's cuboidal in nature, has a solute potential of negative... Let's write that in here. I guess I should have put negative 0.7.5. When immersed in a beaker solution, has a solute potential negative 4. So the solute potential here, this is an S, and this is an S, is equal to negative 4. What will be the cell's pressure, cell's pressure potential? Well, what I do know is that I'm at equilibrium. Constant volume. The cell's not getting bigger anymore. So that means that the plant, right, the plant's water potential should be equal to the solution, the surrounding solution's water potential. Okay? Now, because it's an open system and the what? The pressure is zero, I know that this, okay, is equal to my water potential. Okay? So what did I say? Negative four. So this is also the water potential. And therefore, that has to equal the plant's water potential. Because it's at constant volume. But, interesting enough, we know that that's equal to what? The pressure potential, okay, which we don't know because it's in a cell that could be positive, negative, or zero. My guess it's going to be some value because the constant volume means the shape is being upheld. Okay, so this is my pressure and a plus the what? Well, the pressure, I mean the solute potential is negative 0.75. So negative 4 equals negative 7.5 plus my what? Pressure of my plant. So they're asking for the cell's pressure, and there we are. And lo and behold, we get 3.5. Of course, bars, and it's positive. Now, why is it positive? Because there's turgor pressure. What's turgor pressure? Okay, well, kind of water is rushing in, right? Negative 4 is rushing in. And it's kind of being equalized by the extra pressure. So it's kind of rushed in, created some pressure. It's, it pushed, it ballooned out this cell wall to push back. That's the turgor pressure. So that's the turgor pressure that plus that 3.5 plus a negative gives me the same. So I should say it rushed in to create the turgor pressure, but now we're at equilibrium. Okay, we're maintaining the shape. All right. So number nine, try on your own. Check out the key. I would like you to also, from everything you've learned, finish the true and false. Thank you and good night.